So we're going to be looking at example number example number 21, 26.1. And so in this example, we want to calculate the so we want to calculate the drift velocity. So we're going to calculate the drift speed in a copper wire. And so if you remember from last class, we said that, um, so we said that the current, so the current in the wire is given by this equation here. So I is equal to N, N times Q, times um, the velocity times the so let me just remind you again in this equation here I want to remind you what each of these quantities represent so n so n is the number number of number of conduction electrons number of conduction electrons per cubic per cubic meter q is a charge And the charge of an electron is just 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And A is the area and then B subscript B is called the drift drift velocity. So if you look at this example here, so it tells me that we have a we have a copper wire. It tells me what the cross-sectional area is. So it tells me what the cross-sectional area is, is this value here. And then it says that it carries a current of 10.0 amps. And then it's asking to calculate what is the drift speed of the electrons in the wire. So notice that I can write this equation as so the drift speed, if I solve for current, it's just going to be equal to the current divided by n times q times a. So we know what the current is. The current is given by this value. So the current is equal to 10. And we know what the charge is. We know what the charge and, and the cross-sectional area is. So I just need to calculate this, this quantity here. And so let me move on to the next slide here. So the way we calculate n is to use this equation here. So, so small n is given by this equation. So again, this is my equation that I want to use where my n is equal to n a times d over m, rho over m. So n a is the Avogadro's number. It's the Avogadro number. Rho is the density. And M, M is called the atomic mass number. M is the atomic mass number. So, 
if you solve this equation correctly, you should get this value for the velocity. It should be about 2.23 times 10 to the negative 4. So you can see that this is a very, very small It's a very small speed. And this is why this is called the drift velocity. So if you go back here to this, So if you go back here to this picture here, so let me share my other screen. So let me share my other screen. So if this is a comfort, so let's, let's assume that this is my So if you think about this as your cover, then this has um, so the positive charges here are kind of fixed. Then on top of this, we also have electrons. Now what we're saying is that when I take this copper cable and I connect it to a, to a body, such that this is plus and this is minus and this is delta V. So when there's a delta V, what happens is that this delta V is going to create an electric field and the electric field is going to give energy to this electron here and then the electron is going to move and then it collides with this electron and then this electron picks up speed and moves like that. So you can see that the electrons are simply just drifting. So that's why we call this a drift speed. So again, this is how you calculate that quantity. So it's, you calculate it from here. So this is N A So you can solve this equation to get the drift speed is the current divided by N A times Q. I think the, the tricky part here is just to know how to calculate this N. So this little N you calculate it using this equation is the density divided by the mass. And then you multiply that by the Avogadro's number. And then you need, you need to multiply that by the number of electrons. So, so, the, um, so the way this works is that your big M, your big N is called the mass number. So if you take density, so density is what? Density is kilograms per, so let me just, let me open a new screen here. So I'm saying that we calculate the trip velocity using this equation. So trip velocity is equal to current divided by N times A. So this little N, this little N is given by this equation. So N is given by its density 
divided by n times n a and then all of this multiplied by number of electrons per atom. So what I'm saying is that all of this quantity here gives me the number of atoms So I want to explain a little bit what this equation represents here. So if you take the, so density is always given in kilograms per cubic meters. And big M, so big M is called the molar mass, and this has to be in kilograms. So when I calculate, when I take this quantity here, density over M, So this should give me kilograms per cubic meters. So this should be kilogram per, I'm sorry, this should be kilogram per mole. So this is kilogram per one mole. So you divide this by the kilograms per now when you do this, you get mole per cubic meter. Then when you multiply by Na, so Na is what? So Na is the number of atoms per mole. So, so finally we have that all of this quantity here, so density over N times Na you can see that this is mole per cubic meters. Then you multiply that by number of atoms. And mole. So all of that should give you the total number of atoms. And then you take that number and then you just multiply by the number of electrons that you have, you should get that value for. 